In episode six, Aang arrives at Roku's temple, and he thinks that he's going to get a calm, peaceful welcome, because that's what temple is supposed to be, calm and peaceful, even if it is from the Fire Nation. Yeah, Aang's sadly mistaken. They attack him right away, but luckily he does find an ally, someone who believes in the fact that the Fire Nation isn't better than everybody. They just add to the balance of everything, and when they see the Avatar, they want to help. So this one brave firebender holds off everybody, helping Aang through the temple, finding his way to the shrine. This allows Aang to go in an avatar state and talk to Roku. And Roku is a lot different than Kaoshi. A lot more jovial, willing to crack a smile, seems to enjoy himself. He's willing to help out Aang until Aang tells him about Ko. And Roku admits that he didn't defeat Ko, he just took something from Ko. And what he took was a totem that represents something that Ko needs and can't forget. It belonged to the Mother of Faces, an ancient spirit who crafted faces from all living beings. And it's because of the Mother of Faces that we have identity into the world. Mother of Faces was Ko's mother. So all Ko wants is family back. And for Aang, he feels like if he brings the totem back, Ko will release his friends. So when he snaps out of that avatar state, he's able to locate the totem pretty easily. But when he goes to escape the temple, he notices that all the firebenders who were chasing him are paralyzed. And then he sees what paralyzed him. It's Nyla, who is June's Shershu. A Shershu is a large warthog-like creature who has the ability to track, hunt, and obviously can also paralyze targets with its touch. And that's what it does to Aang. It paralyzes him. June drags Aang to a cave and just waits out both Zuko and Iroh to pick him up so that she can collect her bounty. And while they're waiting, Aang is begging her to let him go, but she doesn't care. She doesn't buy in all the hype about the Avatar. What she wants is payment. A short while later, both Iroh and Zuko do show up, and they have to do so somewhat covertly. Because earlier in the day, Aang had reached the top deck of his ship, and he was wondering why exactly they steered off course. And that's when he finds out that Commander Zhao had taken over. He got permission to do so from Lord Ozai. And Zuko, while he doesn't agree with it, is frankly outnumbered. Now, he has to report to Commander Zhao. And he looks at his men for some help, some loyalty, but none of them want to give it to him. Once Zuko storms off, Lieutenant G, who is kind of Zuko's second in command, gets real bold with Iroh and explains to him that no one is going to follow Zuko because he doesn't care about anything. He doesn't care about his men, and to them, he's never going to be their prince. And Iroh doesn't punish G for this, he just explains how wrong G truly is. But he's going to have to hold off on explaining it in further detail because they have to go pick up the Avatar. When they do pick up Aang, they put him in a cart, and they're planning on just escorting him into the Fire Nation, and that way both Zuko and Iroh can return home finally. They can get all the credit. And Aang is begging them not to do this the entire time, but just like with June, they're not listening. And Aang is explaining to them that if they don't let him go, innocent people are going to die, but they just don't care. They have a mission to do. They, however, do not reach the Fire Kingdom. Because while they're on their way, they get surrounded by a bunch of firebenders. And when Zuko says, don't you guys know who I am? Commander Zhao pops out from the forest and says, oh no, they're aware of who you are. They're aware that you defied my orders. Zuko would love to fight back, but unfortunately, he's way, way outnumbered. And even if he could take all these guys out, Commander Zhao has some elite archers perched in the trees to fire at will. So while it sucks, Zuko has to hand over the Avatar. And it looks like Commander Zhao is going to get all the credit. And while Zuko is trying to game plan with Iroh on how to get the Avatar back, How he's going to defy his father's orders, go into the Fire Nation, get his prize. Iroh has to get tough with him and say, Zuko, it's over. There's nothing you can do. At least for now. Commander Zhao will make a mistake, and when he does, we will strike. But for now, that's all we can do, is wait. But for Zuko, he's too close, and he's not willing to wait. It might be a suicide mission, but he's going to put on a mask, he's going to sneak into the Fire Nation... And he's going to get the Avatar back, freeing him, taking him into captivity, and then delivering him to his father, just like he had planned the entire time. Zuko ends up waiting for Nightfall to do this. At that point, 
all of Commander Zhao's men are celebrating the fact that they have the Avatar. It's only a matter of time before they deliver Aang to Lord Ozai, and they have whatever they want. And because of that party, the Commander's men are so distracted that they don't notice that a sword-wielding masked man has snuck behind their lines. While the party rages on, Zuko quickly makes his way through the building, killing anybody who gets in his way, easily, mind you, and he frees the Avatar. And the Avatar has no idea who is behind this. He's happy to be free, but he's also a little puzzled. It's not like he's going to sit there and start asking questions. He just wants to escape at this point. The questions can wait. Unfortunately for the both of them, it doesn't take too long for Commander Zhao to realize that his prized possession has escaped. He puts the word out to all of his men to keep an eye out for the Avatar. The escape should have been easy, but now Aang and Zuko have to fight their way through a bunch of Commander Zhao's men, and they're able to do so, for the most part. They put up a valiant effort, but eventually, the both of them get cornered, and Commander Zhao has a bunch of men waiting to attack on his order. He tells all of his men not to kill the Avatar. He needs him alive. So Zuko decides to grab the Avatar, holding him at knife point. That's his only shot at getting out of there alive. With Zuko digging his knife into Aang's throat, Commander Zhao has no choice but to give them what they want and open the gate. But once Aang and Zuko get outside of the gates, and it looks like they're safe, Commander Zhao gives word to his archer to take the masked man out. The arrow hits Zuko right in the mask. It doesn't kill him, but he's knocked out. And Aang, using his powers, swirls up a bunch of dust and smoke, so that the archers can't see him, and he gets Zuko to safety. But he is shocked when he finds out who the guy was who freed him. This has been the same guy who's been searching for him for three years. When Zuko eventually wakes up, he's kind of annoyed about the fact that he had to be saved by the Avatar. But Aang has this ability about him to connect with people. No matter how much Zuko wants to dislike Aang, Aang is not going to dislike Zuko. He compliments him on his calligraphy because when he stole his journal... It's just incredible. And not just the calligraphy, but the information in it. Zuko knows more about avatars than anybody else in the world. And Aang's just really impressed by it. Slowly, you see that Aang is breaking down that barrier and tough exterior of Zuko. He does ask Zuko, why are you fighting Fire Nation people? They're supposed to be on your side. And Zuko says, they're not on my side, but they're going to be. Once I capture you and bring you back to my father. If I do that, I can go home and I can take my place as the rightful heir to the Fire Lord. Aang asks him, do you even want that? And Zuko says, yes, of course. That's what everybody expects of me. And Aang can commiserate with that. Because he has a lot of pressure on himself for being the Avatar. He then tells him that maybe if he does take the throne, he can improve. He can be better than his father. Because deep down, Aang feels like Zuko knows what his father is doing is wrong. But when Aang says... You know, you can show some compassion. That sets Zuko off. He actually gets really close to attacking Aang, and Aang has to defend himself, throwing Zuko back and knocking him out. But Aang doesn't blame Zuko because he can tell that he's been hurt a lot in his life. The next time Zuko wakes up, he's in a canoe, and Aang is just staring at him. Aang lets him know that the soldiers are gone, and that means that he should be able to get back to his ship without getting spotted. Aang then says to Zuko, you know, the worst part about being born 100 years ago was that I lost all my friends. And I had this one friend who was from the Fire Nation. Do you think that maybe if we knew each other back then that we would be friends? And Zuko sends a clear message that they would not be friends. He throws a fireball right at Aang that Aang has to jump and dodge. But Aang once again doesn't attack. He just uses his powers as an airbender to push Zuko's raft out to sea so he can link back up with his ship. With Zuko on his way back, it allows Aang to get back to the burnt forest, return to Ko's cave, give back what Roku took from him, and just like Aang thought, once he does that, Ko releases not only Katara and Sokka, but also everybody he took from that village. Once Aang makes sure that everybody's safe, he goes back to visit Gaiatso, but sadly Gaiatso is not there anymore, and Aang gets super sad. With Zuko heading back, it does give Iroh a chance to pull Commander Xi aside and explain to him why he was wrong. It all really circles back to why Zuko has that mark on his face all over his eye. Even though Zuko was told not to, when he went to a strategic meeting with his father and a bunch of other commanders, 
he fought back on their ideas because their ideas at the time were to sacrifice an entire battalion of troops so that it would open up other pathways for their victory. And Zuko just didn't agree with that. He didn't like the idea of sending firebenders to their death. But Lord Ozai got so mad at the fact that his son talked back to him, he challenged him to a fight. And Zuko didn't want to fight his father, but his father didn't give him a choice. And Zuko actually got the better of his father, but he showed compassion. So his father decided to teach him a lesson. And that lesson was the mark on his face. That's one of the reasons why Zuko freaked out when Aang suggested he show compassion. Because he thought back to that moment. But Zuko's ultimate punishment was to be sent on this fool's errand of finding the Avatar. And the crew that he was given was that crew that was supposed to be sent to die. And once Lieutenant G finds all that information out, the fact that he was actually supposed to be dead at this point, but it was Zuko who stuck up for him. It was Zuko who's the whole reason why he's alive. It totally changes everything. So when Zuko finally does return to the ship, he returns to a crew that is ready to go to war for him. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.